Sometimes you meditate just to get the mind to quiet down. Sometimes you meditate to spread goodwill to all beings. Sometimes to dedicate merit. And sometimes in celebration. And today is a day for celebration, the 31st anniversary of the founding of Wameta. It was on this date 31 years ago that they got the land. All thanks to the vision of a John Suat, who was very far sighted. He saw that there was a need for a place where people could really be quiet and practice. He had founded already three other monasteries in the States, but they were mainly in suburban areas, so they're not really quiet. He wanted a place where it really could be a forest. But the environment was secluded and conducive to practice. And he was one of the first to see this need. I was visited one time by another senior monk in Thailand who said, Who's going to come out and all the way here to find you? And we've proven over the 31 years that people will come. You give people an opportunity to practice, and they'll come, either to practice themselves or to support other people in the practice, regardless of nationality, regardless of language or race. We're all human beings. We have this in common that we all suffer. And we see the Buddhist teaching as an opportunity to put an end to that suffering. That's what brings us together. That's what unites us, despite our other differences. And it's a good thing to be united around. Other people who unite around opportunities to make money or to make war. We gather on the opportunity to find peace of mind, find a genuine happiness. And that's where we're doing a good thing, not only for ourselves, but also for the world. We're trying to follow in line with the teachings of the Buddha as best we can. This is what also brings us together. John Swa used to talk about two of the themes that a John Mind would talk about often. One is following the customs of the noble ones. We're not here to follow Thai customs, American customs, Burmese customs, or Sri Lankan customs. We're here to follow the customs of the noble ones. This is what we all have in common. They teach us to be contented with what we have in terms of food, clothing, and shelter. And to find happiness in developing skillful qualities of mind and abandoning unskillful ones. And that connects with the other main theme that Ajahn Mahan would talk about, which is practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. We're not just developing our own prejudices or developing our own likes and dislikes. We're looking to see, to objectively in our mind, what mental states, even though we may like them, are going to lead to harm. What mental states, even though we don't like them, are going to lead to lead to happiness. And so instead of thinking about our likes, we can go for what will actually give good results. Bring peace in our minds and through peace in our minds, peace all around us. So here we are in this quiet corner. People come from far and wide to find some peace and rest, to find some stillness of mind. So we're meditating in celebration of that today looking at what we ourselves have gained from this, what we ourselves have gained by giving to this, what we can continue to gain from the practice now and on in the future. So gather your mind together in celebration. Think of all the people who helped this place, from the John Suet's first in inspiration, to the people who gave the land, and the people who helped in all kinds of myriad ways. Think about them supporting you in your practice. And then you're supporting the people who will come after through the best way, which is by practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. This is what maintains this as a place of value.